Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to make this batch of cards with very little waste. And uh, so the key to this, as you're going to see, is that we make our envelopes first and then we die cut a bunch of little goodies with the scraps and uh, then we make our cards and we actually have leftovers when we're done to decorate the insides of the cards. So I'm going to show you these that we're going to make. We're going to be decorating these little uh, raw wood shapes uh, with stamping and, and heat embossing. So it's a really versatile technique um, for you to try on surfaces other than paper. What I really love is that um, when you're done, you have four cards and envelopes, very little waste, and you've got some really unique cards. So, um, oh, I wanted to show you the insides, how I decorated these. I mean, nothing fancy, but just to use up the extra scraps. This video is brought to you by Top Flight Stamps. They are a, um, a curator of the coolest stamp companies from around the world, and they bring them right here to the States for us to find. And uh, the supplies that I'm using are these... Um, paper artsy stamps. I've got these uh, wood shapes. You'll see in a second I'll show you the wood shapes before I took them apart and also some paints that go a really long way. I took out way too much so I had to actually make some background paper with the paint. So instead of me just explaining it right here, why don't we just go to the tutorial and I'll show you how it's done. We're going to grab a bunch of stuff from our stash today, but these are the products we're starting out with. I've got these uh, paints by Seth Apter from Paper Artsy, and they're kind of like a jewel, earthy jewel tones, I would say. Um, very high quality paints. I'd never used this brand before, and I was very pleased with them. I've got the stamp set designed by Sarah Newman for Paper Artsy, and then these wood shapes also designed by Seth Apter. And um, the wood shapes are really neat. I want to let you know, though, they are kind of um, firmly attached in their... Um, kind of wood uh, sheet there. So uh, just be careful as you're removing them and as you're removing the frames, each of these shapes actually has a frame that goes with it. If you happen to uh, break the frame, don't worry, you can use a little white glue or wood glue to uh, put it back together. So, you know, just be kind of gentle while you're taking them out of the frame, but then um, if you do break it, it's easy to repair. I'm working on a non-stick craft mat. It's actually an oven mat, and I've scored it out a little bit of each color, which is way more than I need, I found out, because this paint goes a long way. I mixed a little water with the uh, kind of like buff white color because I wanted to get kind of like a pickled stain look on the wood pieces, um, and I wanted a little color on there, so here I'm just picking up a little bit of color and just kind of gently, softly brushing it over the uh, white wash that I put on there. And um, you can really just pick up a tiny little bit of whatever color you want to get a little bit of staining or bruising on the wood. Um, I cannot stress enough that you do not need to put this much paint out. And uh, because I took so much out, it actually was a happy accident because I ended up making some backgrounds, which you'll see in a second. I did all the pieces in the same manner. I saved the frames for another project. Uh, the only thing I want to caution you is to not use more than um, three colors together, meaning the white as your first, your base color, and then um, just no more than two of the other colors. Otherwise, you could end up with mud because if you mix red, yellow, and blue together, they do make brown or black. So just kind of keep that in mind. If you want, you can paint the backs, but I realized that I really didn't need to for this card making project. But if you wanted to make like an ornament or a gift tag, then go ahead give a coat of paint to the backs as well. Then I realized I had way too much paint, so rather than waste any of that scrumptious color, I decided to take a piece of heavyweight cardstock, and I like to use the Recollections brand from Michaels, and I cut it into quarters, and then I basically just started brushing on um, on color. And really no rhyme or reason, just tried to make an interesting background for the four cards that I'm going to make. At the end, I decided to just press my paper into the paint left over on my pad and kind of pull a print that way, and I thought that made a really cool um, impression as well. Well, the great thing about this paint is that it does not warp my paper. Now, I didn't add more water to this paint as I was uh, coating the paper, so that's something to keep in mind. But uh, if you use a heavyweight cardstock, this should uh, go on without warping. While my wood shapes and papers dried, I got some other elements ready for crafting. Here you can see the dried wood shapes and the pattern papers. Aren't they pretty? And they have this beautiful thick velvety texture, which really gives a nice weight and feel to the cards. So I took some um, scrap of paper. I just looked at the colors that I painted and found four sheets that matched pretty well, and I trimmed them to eight by eight. Then out of the scraps, I took some old die cuts that I'd had, kind of organic shapes, and cut um, some shapes out of them. You're also gonna wanna have handy a um, embossing buddy or a um, anti-static tool and your stamps and some pigment black ink and some black embossing powder. We're going to use that to stamp on our wooden shapes so that we get a really nice crisp image. 
I'm using VersaFine Onyx Black as my stamping ink because it gives me a really nice impression and um, I, I want to make sure I have the best possible impression when I'm working on a surface other than paper. So once you've determined that your stamp's inked up really well, you can either push it down onto your block to stamp it or you can actually press the wooden piece down on top of the stamp. It really doesn't matter. Just make sure that you're getting a really good um, firm impression there. Don't worry if the image isn't absolutely dark and perfect because the embossing powder is going to cling to that and you're going to get a really good result. You have to make sure that the wooden shapes are completely dry before you attempt to emboss because if they're not, um, that embossing powder is going to stick to any damp paint that is still there. So before I even began off camera, I actually blasted it with my heat tool just to make sure that there was no moisture left on the surface. So then I sprinkled on my black embossing powder and I'm just using one of those pieces of paper I cut from my uh, envelope as my uh, kind of catch-all uh, paper and then I'm going to heat it with a heat tool and it's going to take about a minute. Just be careful you don't burn your fingers because you are holding that really close to the uh, stamped image. Then you want to repeat that same process for each of your images and each of your wooden shapes. Um, I do recommend you stamp and then emboss. Don't stamp them all and then go emboss them all. Otherwise, the ink could dry on you before you get a chance to get the embossing powder on there. So just do one at a time and it really doesn't take that long. They really look so pretty and professional once they're all shiny and embossed. And this would be a great technique to make Christmas ornaments with. So file that away uh, when it comes to time to do some Christmas crafting. So I thought it'd be nice to add a little more color to my images here. So I am using watercolor crayons and a small brush to kind of paint in the um, some of the colored areas, almost like you're tinting a black and white photo. Um, I like the, the watercolor crayons because they're water soluble. They layer over this chalk paint really well and um, you can wipe it right off the embossing if you get too much on there. And uh, they're semi-opaque, so they, uh, they cover well, but they don't obscure everything. Like if you went over with more acrylic paint, it might just obscure everything. I'm using a combination of Lira watercolor crayons and also some metallic Caran d'Ache watercolor crayons, but you can use whatever you have. In fact, water-soluble oil pastels will also work just as well. These wooden shapes had lots of cool holes and notches drilled into them, so I thought it would be a great opportunity to embellish them with some wire and beads. And this was just an inexpensive kit of wire and beads I picked up at the craft store many years ago. Um, and I would just suggest that you don't get overwhelmed. Uh, don't dig out every bead you have and try to find the perfect bead. Just find a few and have fun with it. So I'm starting off by using my needle nose pliers to make a little spiral at the end, and that's going to keep it from pulling through one of the holes in the uh, first image I'm working with and that's also going to keep somebody from getting um, poked with it and it will hopefully keep it from you know catching in mail machinery if it's mailed although I would probably recommend that you hand deliver these because they are so bulky or that you pop the whole thing in a padded mailer before you go to mail it. And then I just find a few beads that look uh, pretty, like I'm doing shades of blue here, but you can use whatever you like, and just feeding it in and out of the holes on the uh, little wood shape. And that's really all there is to it, and you want to repeat that for each of the designs that you plan to use. Now that our focal pieces are done, we can make some cards. So I have chopped up some cardstock, basically cut the cardstock in half so I'd have some card bases. I need four, so I cut two pieces of cardstock in half. And then I was just looking at my panel and seeing how much of a border I wanted. So I wanted to have about an eighth of an inch on each side. So I'm going to cut off about a quarter of an inch from uh, two edges. So I'll have a nice balanced panel here and I'm just using my tiny little trimmer for that and I'm eyeballing it and seeing how it looks and I like to do that uh, before I start each card because I often just need to shear a little bit off of one of the edges to make it balanced so that's where these little mini trimmers come in handy and there I can see I've got a nice um, balance there. Then I basically started rifling through my die cuts and deciding what I wanted to put on the card and I like this like honeycomb type strip uh, because it's just a really nice um, backdrop and then I had this other one that just had little polka dots on it and I thought that would be nice kind of layered over. I like to cluster elements as much as I can. Um, it just seems to uh, make a design look really nice. Um, for some movement, I added these little butterflies. Now it's kind of um, worth noting that I am not, I am working on this panel and I have not attached it to my card base yet because I know I wanted to use some eyelets. So I wanted them to be hidden under that panel. So that's why I haven't attached that to my card base yet. 
and I'm just setting those glue, those uh, butterflies down there and figuring out where I want my focal point. And I'm using hot glue to attach the focal point because um, a heavy wood object like that, well, it's not really heavy, but it is bulky and it, you need a thicker, fast drying glue to attach that, especially since you have the wire on the back kind of making things uneven. You can see that I've put eyelets on the middle of the butterfly's bodies. You could also use brads, but the reason I did it um, before attaching it to the card base was so I didn't have those poking out into the inside of my card. And then I'm simply going to apply some adhesive on the card base itself and press the uh, decorated panel on top. I advise making your envelopes as you go. That way you always have an envelope ready for every card. So what I'm doing here is I took that eight inch square and the reason I have an eight inch square of paper is because I measure corner to corner and that is seven inches and then you add one inch and that gives you the size square you need to make to make an envelope for any size card. So you just measure corner to corner. I take that measurement, add an inch and that is the size square you cut and it doesn't matter what size card you're doing, this will work. Um, of course it works better for squares and rectangles than really, really long skinny rectangles but still it'll work. Now I tried to make my folds over about a eighth of an inch just so I have a little wiggle room especially for those thick um, wooden panels but I basically just fold the um, the cardstock around and that's how I get my envelope. All of these cards are made in the same fashion. The only difference is that if I wasn't going to use a brad or an eyelet, I just glued the painted paper directly onto my uh, card base from the start. It was just a little easier to build that way um, because then I don't have to glue a lumpy thing down after the fact. But pretty much I just swapped out the die cuts and made them all the same exact way. I love making cards in this manner of making the envelopes first and then using the scraps to decorate the cards because you end up with so many options and it's virtually waste free. I even even had enough left over to decorate the inside of the card and I really love to do this because um, if you're not so wordy writing a message on the inside of the card, it takes up some of the space and makes it feel a little more complete. I want to thank you for watching this tutorial today and I want to thank Top Flight Stamps for sponsoring this video. Make sure to use the coupon code TheFrugalCrafter10 for 10% off of your order. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Until next time, happy crafting!